Hey everybody, uh, Sam here again. I'm here at the Little Caesars Arena in Midtown Detroit, um, which is where the uh, Detroit Red Wings and the Pistons play. And we're here to uh, today to drive the new Chevy Equinox EV. And while GM is, or Chevrolet certainly has talked a lot about the Silverado EV, which we're gonna be driving tomorrow, um, the, uh, the Equinox is actually in, in many ways probably GM's the most important of the new GM Altium EVs that they're launching right now. Uh, because this is the most affordable uh, vehicle that uh, electric vehicle that GM's going to have at least until the next generation Bolt arrives, uh, which should be maybe late 2025 or sometime in 2026. But in the meantime, we've got the Equinox, and uh, we've had a chance to drive it. Can't talk to you about that just yet. But let's give a little, take a little walk around this vehicle. All right. So this is the Equinox EV. Uh, GM is. <laughs> Uh, keeping some of the branding of some of their gas engine uh, vehicles, but the vehicles are not necessarily in the exact same segment as their gasoline equivalents. Uh, for example, this Equinox EV is actually about six inches longer than uh, the gas engine Equinox that is also being launched right about now, uh, the, new, the all new version of that. Uh, and in fact, you know, GM calls this a compact crossover, Really, it's not. This is more of a mid-size crossover. This thing has grown quite a bit. This car is 10 inches longer than a Toyota RAV4, which is the uh, top-selling crossover. Actually, uh, after full-size pickup trucks, it's the top-selling nameplate in the U.S. now. Um, but you know, it's still—it's not a bad size. You know, even though this is really a mid-size crossover at this point, um, but it's—it's it's quite a nice size. It's very attractive design. It's consistent with uh, the direction that GM's been going for some of its uh, smaller crossovers over the last year or so, ever since they launched the tracks, the, the second generation tracks. Um, so, uh, and they've, they've diverged this quite a bit from the new gas Equinox. Uh, so the gas Equinox has gone for a more rugged, off-road, off -road, uh, outdoorsy type look, even though it's not really an off-road vehicle. Uh, whereas this is much more car-like, um, you know, GM talks or Chevrolet talks about their design language being uh, on a spectrum between what they call um, velocity and uh, oh, I can't remember now, but it's you know, more work related, you know, toughness um, with the, the trucks and the bigger SUVs being at the tough end and the velocity being at the, the opposite end. Um, and the way you can tell them apart visually is the velocity vehicles are. Uh, you know, car, you know, things like the Corvette, the now defunct Camaro, uh, and some, and uh, the previous generation Equinox. You look at the wheel wells, the wheel wells are round. Whereas, if you look at the new gasoline engine Equinox, the wheel wells are like the big trucks, the big SUVs, they're more squared off. So, this is, you know, very sleek shape uh, to this vehicle. Uh, this is an RS trim, so this is the top trim level. Um, this is available in front wheel drive with uh, 233 horsepower uh, and an all wheel drive, e all wheel drive version with 288 horsepower. Um, the all wheel drive, uh, both, end, both of them use a permanent magnet motor at the front axle. Um, and the e all wheel drive gets an AC induction motor on the rear axle, which is a little smaller, lighter, less expensive. And also, when it's not needed, uh, it has less drag, so a little bit better efficiency than if you used a permanent magnet motor. So it's not really designed for performance. It's more like what we would typically see on an all-wheel drive crossover, where the uh, uh, the the primary they're primarily front-wheel drive, and then they kick some torque to the rear axle uh, on an as-needed basis when uh, when they need some extra traction in low traction conditions. And this particular one is set up right now. It's full of hockey gear. There's two full hockey bags, skates, all kinds of other gear in here, you know, for two hockey players with the back seats folded down. So you can see there's quite a lot of cargo space with the back seats folded down. But even with the back seats up, you still get quite a bit of cargo space. Uh, and the, uh, the interior, again, you can see all the space in here. The interior of this, all right. So I am really a fan of the look of the Chevy Equinox EV. Uh, I think it's a very sleek, modern shape, um, not as cluttered, not as overstyled as the Blazer. Um, you know, it's a, it's a little more 
restrained. Uh, but I really like this, especially this color combination of the white roof on the blue body. Let's take a look at the back seat. It's very roomy back here. There's definitely more than enough room for two broad-shouldered adults. Uh, three, if they're not, uh, if they're a little slimmer, certainly three kids, no problem at all. Um, lots of leg room down here. Uh, I'm about 5'11", and plenty of headroom as well. And the back, the front seat, also very comfortable. This back seat is uh, surprisingly comfortable. It uh, got decent amount of support. Could use a little bit more uh, thigh support, um, but it's not bad at all. Uh, you've got a couple of USB-C ports back here, as well as a couple of uh, vents, and then more USB-Cs in the front. Let's step into the front, take a look at that. And so the front seat, again, uh, very roomy up here. Um, the seats are um, much more supportive than the ones in the Blazer. I uh, like them a lot better. Uh, this does share a, quite a few components with the Blazer uh, and with GM's other, uh, most of GM's other newer vehicles. Oh, can't turn it on, no key in this one right now. Uh, but you have 17.7 inch uh, touchscreen here in the center, uh, 11 inch instrument cluster display up here. And one of the things I really appreciate with GM is that they are retaining um, physical controls for the most common climate controls, uh, as well as the volume control up here. So you've got on off, uh, automatic climate control, AC, heat, um, defoggers, all easily reachable. Uh, you don't have to search around with uh, in a touchscreen interface. Um, and I like the round vents in here. One of the touches I particularly like on, on these uh, blue ones here uh, is the blue trim here on the door panels and on the dashboard to go along with the blue on the outside. I think it's a nice contrast. It looks really good. This particular one, as you can see, has the um, infrared camera for the driver monitor system and the light bar, uh, which means that this one is equipped with Super Cruise, so hands-free driving assist capability. Uh, you've got a decent uh, array of um, physical controls on the steering wheel as well for uh, speed control, uh, super cruise, and then over here, voice control. Um, the, uh, the Equinox, like GM's uh, other new EVs and most of their other new vehicles, has an Android automotive-based infotainment system uh, that uh, uh, allows you to connect um, to, it's got Google Maps, Google Assistant, and the Google Play Store, so you can download Android apps. They run directly on the vehicle in the infotainment system, so you don't have to pair up a phone. Unfortunately, they, it does not have does not include support for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Uh, so, particular if, for Android users like myself, not so much of a problem because uh, you can download most most of your favorite streaming apps uh, and even uh, ways so you can get YouTube Music, Spotify, whatever you like, Pocket Cast. You can download those, run those right on the infotainment system. Um, you get eight years of connectivity included uh, for uh, Maps and Google Assistant. Um, and three years for uh, app data uh, so you can get uh, when you buy the vehicle so you can use your apps and stream your data for your for your apps uh, for three years without having to pay for an OnStar subscription after that you will have to pay for an OnStar subscription um, and again that blue trim extends down here to the, the center console and you've got a wireless charging pad down here and more storage underneath as well as in the door pockets so that's a quick tour of the Chevy Equinox EV, um, and uh, soon uh, you'll be getting a full uh, drive review uh, that will be on the Autopian, and we'll talk about it on wheel bearings. Talk to you all later. Bye.